Coming up on DTNS, Amazon announces new smart everything. Oculus tries to wow VR fans with its announcements, and Match.com gets sued by the government. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, September 25th, 2019 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, in a VR environment, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. We were just talking about cheesy grits uh, and a lot of other food-related items on Good Day Internet. Uh, there's, there's always good talking going on on Good Day Internet. You get that wider pre-show of us getting ready for Daily Tech News Show by becoming a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. eBay announced that CEO and president and company director Devin Wenig st is stepping down with former chief financial officer Scott Schenkel taking control on an interim basis. Wenig has served as president since 2011 and replaced John Donahoe as CEO in 2015. Uh, check this out. Apple released TV OS 13. This added multi-user support, a refreshed home screen with full screen video previews, a control center, a new picture-in-picture -picture option, and it also supports a new little thing that I'm super in love with called Apple Arcade, uh, which also includes support for Sony's DualShock 4 controllers and Microsoft's Xbox controller, uh, the wireless Bluetooth controller that they have on the current Xbox One, and I can confirm both those controllers work, as does the Apple TV swimmingly. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has charged Comscore and its former CEO, Serge Mata, of fraud. Comscore is one of the main companies responsible for measuring Internet traffic and is accused of misreporting the value of data swapping contracts, as well as misreporting customer signups to give the impression of growth in revenue and signups when both were decreasing. Mata and Comscore agreed to settle the case by paying a combined total of $5.7 million without having to admit wrongdoing. Mata will also repay $2.1 million to Comscore and is now banned from serving as an officer or director of a public company for 10 years. Mata left Comscore back in 2016. TF Securities analyst Ming-Chi Kuo says that next year's iPhones, you know, if you'd, <laughs> you want to think about the iPhone 12 at this point, will have a metal frame with a more complex segmentation design, new trenching, and injection molding procedures, and sapphire or glass cover assembly to protect the trench injection molding structure. Kuo also says the design will be similar to the iPhone 4. If you can remember that. Quo believes that the design will be more expensive to make, but along with 5G will increase iPhone shipments to 85 million in 2020 from the expected 75 million in 2019. Google will now only show news headlines from European publishers and search results for French users rather than headlines with a few lines of description called a snippet often. A new EU rule that one of those copyright directives requires search engines to pay news outlets in order to show snippets and thumbnail images unless the publisher comes to another arrangement with the search engine. And France is the first of the EU countries to implement the new copyright directive. EU countries have a year to do so. They just got it done quick. All right, let's talk about the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. Scott. All right, let's do that. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission, as you mentioned, filed a lawsuit against Match.com, you know, dating, alleging Match sent notifications to non-paying subscribers for messages from accounts that Match knew were fraudulent, fake accounts. The FTC alleged Match received 499,691 new subscriptions as a result of the fraudulent communications between June 2016 and May of, or sorry, June 2016, rather, and May 2018. The FTC further claims messages from fraudulent accounts were uh, not sent to paying subscribers. The suit also alleges Match made uh, canceling subscriptions very difficult did not seem to honor a six-month guarantee, and locked people from accounts over disputed charges. Match.com disputes the claims, and they intend to fight the allegations. It's oh, a key, key to note here that, that, that Match is, is not accused of creating the accounts. It's saying they knew the accounts were created by somebody as a bot or a fraudulent scam, oh, and yeah. they didn't stop them from creating the notifications well, for the free you know, users. And let, let's remember that this is not sort of like your average social network. This is a dating site, right? So if I, a person who's like, well, I don't want to pay for anything, but somehow, you know, match.com is now sending me emails being like, oh, people are very interested in you. You should, you know, you know, get into that. Like that whole thing is, I think, um, it is, it is sort of a, like, 
phishing scheme that is is tough for people to opt out of. I, right? uh, I based on the nature of what this is. Right, right. I would be it would be easy for me to believe that this is not some conspiracy that yeah. Match realized that these accounts were sending notifications and prioritized its engineering to fix the ones to the paying subscribers first. Uh, before making sure that the free subscribers, knowing that, like, well, you know, that might encourage some people to sign up, so we'll get around to fixing it. Uh, it'll be some, interesting to see how that comes as out. As somebody who, uh, I mean, this is, I won't give full disclosure, I won't tell you who it was, but they're defunct now, so it doesn't really matter, but I worked for a dating site company in 2004 and 05, and we did this all the time. I shouldn't say we did, but people at the top did this all the time. We would huh. see a bunch of new accounts come in, we would know that they looked fishy or mm -hmm. outright knew they were fake or they were, you know, someone trolling or whatever, but we kept them in because it helped mm -hmm. them say with some accuracy, we have this many users or every month we obtain this many new users. It was a really common practice and I would be shocked. I mean, I'm not going to say that's what Match is doing, but it wouldn't surprise me if like the whole of that industry doesn't dabble in that a lot more than we think. Yep. Agreed. Google released an open source database of 3,000 manipulated videos to be used to help research in detecting deepfakes. Google recorded 28 actors speaking, making common expressions, and doing mundane tasks, then used publicly available deepfake algorithms to alter those videos. A data set of manipulations of YouTube videos was released in January by Technical University of Munich researchers and Facebook plans to release its own data set by the end of the year. No, this is great. This is good news. Uh, we're happy to see Facebook announce this earlier. Uh, and of course, the Technical University of Munich research are doing this. So uh, getting oh. more of these data sets out there for people to work on, it's not going to solve the problem with deep fakes, but it's certainly going to help, which is good. Yeah, it's certainly going to help, especially with in the development community. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I, my big takeaway from this is it behooves Google and everybody else with a with a big stake in this game of, you know, tons of users and huge services and whatever, uh, to get out ahead of it and to the show that they're doing work without being forced to or told to or regulated to. Um, because if you don't, that stuff's going to come. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, this is huge positivity and I hope others do it as well. Um, you see, you know, some of the stuff Apple does with security, some of the stuff, uh, you know, Facebook tries to do with, with other, other things. And I think that's good. Like get out in front of it before someone has to tell you that you're doing it. Or at the worst case, you just have a really big PR problem where everyone thinks you don't care. And this is Google saying, yeah. well, we kind of care. Folks, to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. Let's take a deep breath. And into the Oculus 6 conference news. All right, we're going to break this up a little bit. I'm going to start with uh, the first announcements uh, regarding hardware at the Oculus 6 conference. Then we're going to have a couple more Oculus 6 things, and then on in the Amazon announcements. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced a software update called Oculus Link that will let Oculus Quest users connect their headset to a PC using a USB-C cable, should work with most USB-C cables, and let the Quest play the more graphically intensive Oculus Rift games off the PC, like if you had an Oculus Rift. Oculus Link arrives in November. The Oculus Quest will also implement some deep learning and model-based tracking to use its existing cameras for hand tracking through a software update expected to arrive early next year. That feature will be an experimental opt-in choice for users, so it won't just show up. You'll have to say, I want this. And of course, Oculus showed off a couple prototype headsets. Half Dome 2 is a little lighter than the previous Half Dome prototype, also has a smaller field of view at 140 degrees, but like the first Half Dome, lenses move inside the head set to adjust the focus and give you a little more immersion. And Half Dome 3 doesn't even have moving parts, using a number of stacked lenses to shift through 64 planes of focus. Mm -hmm. Can I just say real quick, this link thing is my favorite headline of the day, and I just think <laughs> it's amazing that they're going to let people do that, and I'm also happy to hear that somebody's finally admitting that USB-C can do a whole lot more than they sometimes are letting them. And if you're like me and you bought this thing for portability, but you do kind of miss the fidelity you get from a top end PC tethered to a headset, this is, there's, it's the biggest no brainer I ever heard of to buy this thing. Like I, I just think that that's great. It's also a sign that the Quest probably sold pretty well for them. 
uh, because, you know, making this more accessible across other platforms is a big deal. I just cannot wait for that update. Or that they're getting rid of the Rift, and this is what they're counting on in the future. Po entirely possible, but if that's the case and we're not going to lose much in the transition in terms of fidelity, oh, man. I mean, that's a big deal. I think this is what, maybe my favorite news of the last month. <laughs> and you're going to get hand control. Yeah, that part, that part I'm a little more skeptical about, but not because it's, you know, obviously that's where we're heading and, and all things are possible with time. But um, I guess I'm a little surprised that if it's just algorithm tweaking, a new version of the software, machine learning all coming together to figure out a way to make it so your hands are tracked in 3D space. That sounds really cool, but I don't know. In practice, I feel like we're going to have some herky-jerky for a while, and I just need to be shown different. Hopefully that works well. Of course, Oculus owned by Facebook. So we had a couple of social announcements. Facebook announced it'll launch a VR environment called Facebook Horizon in 2020. Facebook Horizon will let you create your own avatars, chat with friends, play games with friends, uh, move around with teleporting between various rooms. Uh, Facebook Spaces and Oculus Rooms are going to shut down October 25th. So if you're like, wait, you can kind of do that already? Well, after October 25th, you won't. And you won't be able to do it at all until Facebook Horizon launches sometime next year. And a new Facebook-powered social feature will come to Oculus later this year. Uh, chats will let you message Oculus friends from your headset or outside of it. Event planning uh, for gathering together in VR was also announced. And you'll be able to post to Facebook from Oculus, uh, probably meant for things like clips of your gameplay and stuff like that. Well, it doesn't surprise me that Facebook Spaces, Oculus Rooms shutting down to be relaunched as Facebook Horizon next year. Um, whether or not it's going to be the you know the same environment is yet to be seen, but that makes sense. That Facebook is like, okay, we're taking this seriously, and yeah. you know, we 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 want people to you know to get excited about it. My my big uh, takeaway from that is uh, having used what's currently there. Um, I always felt like Facebook was holding back a little bit and being too upfront in the service or being too upfront in the platform. I think they thought there was some wisdom in hanging back and sort of being like Amazon is with Twitch. Don't fiddle with it too much. Let, let Rift and Oculus brand up and be strong on its own. Don't Facebook ourselves in there too much. And I think this actually spells a, a change in that thinking that, that now we're, we're far enough along that they can come in here, create this social space and tie it directly to Facebook and have that branding and stuff all sort of be together because they're just not afraid to do that now. But I think there was some hesitance in, in recent years to well, and I, in front of people. I think they also realized that nobody was really using Facebook spaces or Oculus rooms, at least at the, the level of engagement that they wanted. And so it That's might as well just, like you say, Sarah, just shut it down and replace it next year. Now, it is, it's a little weird to not leave it running until you replace it, but that just tells me there wasn't enough people using it to matter so I why not just shut it down save the save the resources I only ever saw one other human being in there by the way and that yeah was so there you go <laughs> yeah. uh and a few more announcements from oculus 6 facebook announced it's building augmented reality glasses along with having the facebook reality labs develop something called live maps so they didn't talk much about the glasses but they talked a lot about live maps the idea is to recreate the planet in a 3d map so that you won't have to scan your surroundings to overlay things. You'll already know what the surroundings are. It's a big, big project. Live Maps is being built using machine learning as well as supplemented by geotagged images from the Facebook user base so they know what the world looks like in various places. That technology is a few years away. Uh, what's not a few years away is Fandango now launching on the Oculus Go and Oculus Quest headsets to become the place to buy or rent movies and TV shows or access your previous purchases. Uh, Fandango now is part of Movies Anywhere. So if you buy something on, on Google that's part of Movies Anywhere, it would show up in Fandango now and show up on your headset. Fandango now will feature in the Oculus TV app. It didn't say they're getting rid of the native uh, Facebook movies uh, thing. If you've bought any of those, they'll, they should still be there. But it does sound like they're moving Fandango now into that space to become front and center. Uh, disclosure, my wife works for Fandango. And finally, Respawn Entertainment revealed Medal of Honor above and beyond a virtual reality take on the classic World War II franchise coming next year. Can I just a tiny note on that Respawn <laughs> Entertainment news? Uh, Respawn is the company that was uh, Infinity Ward that made the Call of Duty series. Call of Duty, in effect, put Medal of Honor in the grave. And then for like 10 years, those guys did that. And then there was a falling out at Activision, and they left and started Respawn Entertainment. And lately, they're known for the new upcoming Star Wars game. Uh, and the current, um, I forgot the name of it, but their Battle Royale game is very popular at the moment. I can't think of the name. 
uh, they, they, them taking over Medal of Honor is the most ironic thing I've heard in a really long time. And that doesn't even speak to whether it'll be good in VR or not. I don't know. There's lots of shooters in VR, and they range from terrible to uh, kind of okay. Nobody's really cracked that egg. So maybe they'll do it. That's a big team, and they're really amazing. But the fact that they're on Medal of Honor, a game they basically killed with Call of Duty all those years ago, is kind of a hoot. And that's all I wanted to say about that bit. <laughs> Also, you know, the fact that Facebook was like, well, we don't really want to talk about our, you know, our VR glasses, but we're definitely going to recreate the world in 3D. The the latter part of that, I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. But why don't you want to detail the fact the fact that know. your VR glasses are, you know, in the works oh, because the, that that is a huge selling point that no, 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 uh, no, no. you know many companies have 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 fallen short no super smart super smart don't put something up there that you're not ready to show just say look we're working on augmented reality glasses that's all they did they put the words up on the screen so we don't have anything to show you but let me show you what it's going to be able to do because if you put you the glasses that that up means that, if you that, put the glasses that, up too early then people are just going oh it's got this flaw that flaw it looks bad whereas instead you focus on this is what it'll be able to do which is impressive perhaps perhaps but i feel like it's like if it looks crappier than snaps latest spectacles then that's why they're not talking about what it looks like well they're not ready to put it out for a couple of years so they probably don't even know what it's going to look at like yet right. why show you something where it's not even finalized yeah, yeah i guess i guess i just feel like it's a big sell to be like this is so great sarah put this on your face and i i i would be like Yes, this sounds really great. What does it look like to be put on my face? Don't have any information about that. Well, because they're not, because it's not a product yet. That's what. That's all that means. Yeah, it feels like they were just like, "Hey, that's not all. We're working on some other cool stuff. Not ready to show it." That it feels very like an. It's almost like an E three presentation from a, a console company is not ready to show their new controller yet or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that stuff comes out in time. It'll be fine. All right, let's talk about Amazon. We're going to start with the Echoes. Uh, the Echo Dot with Clock. Brian Ibbett will be very happy. He mentioned about the clock on uh, the morning stream this morning. Has an LED display embedded in the usual fabric cover. The display can show you the time, your timers, your outside temperature, stuff like that. Also lets you tap the top button for snooze. It does not have a camera. Pre-orders are available now for $60. No word on shipping. The third generation Echo, just the good old-fashioned Amazon Echo third gen, has better sound. Neodymium and Drivers, three-inch woofer, comes with a twilight blue color option now. Pre-orders have begun for $100. And the Echo Studio, that's the one with the 3D audio support and Dolby Atmos. It can use the microphones to calibrate audio for the room, so it takes in an, into account the echoing and the bouncing off the walls. Has three mid-range speakers, a tweeter, and a woofer. Can support stereo pairing with another Echo speaker, and is positioned to work with Amazon Music HD, as well as Amazon saying it's working with studios to get more tracks that support 3D audio as well. The Echo Studio available for pre-order at $199. And then the Echo Show 8, a mid-sized Echo Show with an 8-inch HD display and a privacy shutter. All the Echo shows are getting drop in on all. Let's you group chat with anybody else in your family that has an Echo. Uh, kids bundle called Free Time is coming to Echo Show devices. The Echo Show 8 is available for pre-orders at $130, and this time they said it will ship in time for the holidays, so they give you a rough idea there. And uh, kind of involved with all these Echoes, Amazon will be selling subscriptions to Food Network Kitchen launching in October. It's a service available on your phone, your tablet, your Fire TV, or your Echo Show uh, to offer uh, recipe saving and cooking directions along with live and on-demand cooking classes, kind of like a Peloton for cooking uh, with the likes of Bobby Flay and Alton Brown teaching classes. Service will cost you $7 a month or $60 a year. Man, how smart is that <laughs> of Amazon to be like, hey, we're launching a cooking show and we're going to talk about lots of devices that you should probably buy for your own kitchen. Hungry after your subscription Peloton workout? Make some food with your subscription. I mean, Peloton. it is genius. Chef's kiss to whoever yeah. thought this one up. But also the Echo Show has shown to be the perfect, I think for a lot of people, the perfect kitchen device, right? So yeah. they're, they're, they're fulfilling a potential need there that everybody bought their Echo shows for or that they're going to buy the new ones mm -hmm. for and take advantage finally of that screen because honestly, I don't hardly use it. But my wife does constantly for like recipe stuff. She's going to totally do this. 
Like this is it's a brilliant way to tie a service into a thing people already have or maybe upgrading to one of these better ones. It's a smart smart thing. All right, let's talk about the Amazon Voice Services announcements. Uh, multilingual mode, which lets people speak one of two languages at this point. It'll support more in the future, but right now one of two languages without having to switch a setting. So in the United States, you can have English and Spanish on at the same time. Whatever you speak to it, it'll recognize that and answer back. Uh, in Canada, English and French. In India, English and Hindi. Uh, there's also a neural text-to-speech model that lets the voice be more emotive and expressive without having to rely on recorded phrases, which is the way these voice assistants have usually worked up till now, recording phonemes and mixing them together. It's going to launch with a free Samuel L. Jackson voice. <laughs> which apparently he didn't record. They just used his recordings to create it. Uh, that also has an explicit mode, if you want it. And additional celebrity voices are coming next year that you have to pay for, 99 cents each. Uh, the ability to ask the Echo, tell me what you just heard, is now live. So if it answers weird, you can say, wait a minute. Uh, later this year, you'll be able to ask, why did you do that? Uh, and Amazon has added an auto-delete feature to its privacy hub, so you can erase your video recordings after three or 18 months automatically. And Alexa Communications for Kids will let parents whitelist contacts that their kids are allowed to talk to on Echo devices. Couple more here. Amazon Voice Services come into Chevy, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac vehicles in the first half of next year through a software update. So if you have a Model 2018 or newer car, you don't have to take it in. You'll just get a software update and get Amazon. And next year, Ring Doorbell Elite users will get a feature to let Amazon Voice Assistant answer the doorbell and talk to the people at the door for you. Uh, so that will be fun to see the videos on YouTube once that's done. Wow, this is getting uh, pretty deep. Uh, Scott, are you a ring doorbell person? No, um, You're I, not. Have, I have a camera out there, but it's separate and it's tied into some other stuff. So I kind of am accomplishing a similar goal with what I'm doing, but I never did buy into the ring thing. It never really convinced me. Are you? Do you have one of those going? No, no, I, I have one. I, I don't. Tom does. Yeah, I mean, okay. So Tom, I mean, this, you know, the let me the just let me just stop you right there. No, okay. I'm definitely not going. To no, leave. all right. I'm definitely not going to do. <laughs> I have my ring on lockdown. It doesn't. It's not allowed to do anything. Uh, all it's meant to do is tell me when someone's at the door and let me see who it is, so I can decide whether I want to open the door or not. I don't need Amazon Voice Services to answer for it. It's not going to be good enough at this point. This is a gimmick, I think. Oh, it's a huge gimmick, and I think it's. I actually think this is going to go no place. I don't think anyone cares about this. I like it sounds neat on paper. Yeah. It's really just them saying, Hey, more ways to talk to your Google assistant. And this here's a way that you probably don't need to. I'm zero interest in this. This isn't. Let me ask you, well, Sarah, yeah. will you yes. be adding Samuel L. Jackson as the voice of your Amazon? I probably, I probably won't. Although, you know, I respect him. Wonderful man. What I do think that people will take advantage of is multilingual mode. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I happen to live upstairs from a, a family who is, you know, English and Spanish. You know, it's, it, it is, it is a very, um, it, this is something that, you know, based on grandparents, uh, children, parents, um, and, and people who are, you know, going in and out of a, a, a situation where the speaker might be, you know, something that you could get an answer from, that is actually a really big deal. Yeah. And I think and that, that that'll make that'll make a big difference to a lot of families. I've noticed that El Crago says he loves Google call screen. I'm not imagining that the ring doorbell working with Amazon voice services is going to work as well as Google call screen. If it does, it might change my mind. I'm imagining it works the way Amazon works now, in which case it's just going to be a hilarious parade of misunderstandings between the person at the door because they're not going <laughs> to quite realize they're talking to an echo, even if they know what one is. All right, finally, more hardware. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go through a bunch of hardware announcements from Amazon. The Ring indoor cam pre-orders now for sixty dollars. Uh, the stick-up cam for Ring for outdoor, which can run off battery wall power or through a solar power add-on. You can pre-order that now for a hundred bucks, so that's cheaper than the previous version. Uh, Ring security cameras are gonna get a home mode in November, so it'll just stop recording when you're around. That's nice. And the Ring alarm retrofit kit, kind of a DIY thing to integrate into your home's existing existing security system hub uh, with a ring alarm setup that's coming in November for 200 bucks, or you can get it bundled with an alarm hub for $376. Uh, don't forget Amazon owns Eero. We got new Eero mesh router 
dollars, much cheaper, ninety nine dollars each or three for two hundred forty nine dollars available in the U.S. today and Europe later this year. Uh, they didn't clarify if they're Wi-Fi six. So I'm thinking they're not. Uh, but you can now use voice to turn guest Wi-Fi on and off or use your voice to pause Wi-Fi access for a specific device like, you know, pause uh, Scott's Amazon Fire tablet and it'll cut it off. Uh, those voice controls are not limited to Eero. They're coming from TP-Link, Asus, Linksys, and Eris as well. The Echo Flex is a tiny little voice assistant that just plugs right into your wall outlet. Uh, it has a USB port for device charging, includes a slot to plug an additional nightlight or motion sensor. That's 15 bucks each. If you're like, I just want to be able to tell the Echo something, but I don't want to have a full speaker somewhere, this is for you. Uh, an API will let developers build other accessories for it too. That's available for pre-order at $25. The Echo Glow is a lamp uh, that doesn't have voice assistant in it, but it pairs with your Echo like a smart device. It can do a sleep timer to gradually dim, play music and flash lights in a dance party mode, could cycle through rainbow colors. Uh, Pre-order in the U.S. costs 30 bucks. And the Amazon Smart Oven, remember last year was a microwave, this year it's not just a microwave, it's a smart oven. It can do convection cooking, air frying, food drying, typical microwave functions as well. You can use the Amazon app or an Echo Show to scan food labels from whole food products for automatic cooking programming. Pre-orders today for $250 with a free Echo Dot thrown in for some reason. And finally, Echo Buds. <laughs> Uh, wireless earbuds with Amazon voice services and Bose noise reduction. You just say the wake word and she'll wake right up. Uh, or you can tap and hold and use your device's native smart assistant, whether that's Google Assistant or Siri or something else. Pre-order the Echo Buds now for 130 bucks. Oh, man, there's so much there. I think I the, Flex, the Flex is my favorite of these announcements because I do a lot of things that don't even require a, 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 her to give me an audible answer. Like it's just a beep to let me know I'm good. Uh, to turn off some lights, to turn on some lights, to shut down a certain part of the uh, what I have in the house connected to all this stuff. So I think it's great. I would say my overall takeaway again here is that Google Assistant is something they're trying to put in everything. You mean Amazon Voice Services? Sorry, man, Amazon Voice Services. I keep doing that. That's that's a problem, by the way. But that might be a me problem. But anyway, they want to have it in everything, and they want third-party vendors doing it. They want to put it all throughout their own products. Uh, this is the right strategy because you need to, if you really want to win that voice assistant war thing that may come down to it in the future, you got to be the one that put it in the most stuff. And it feels like Amazon's ahead of the game in that regard. I got to say the smart oven, I kind of want it. Mm. Yeah, because it can do more than just microwave, right? I'm, exactly. I'm not sure how often yeah. you're going to use the scanner, even if you do shop at Whole Foods. Yeah. Uh, it's not like, unless they're pre-prepared meals at Whole Foods are looking pretty good and you can just stick them in the oven. I don't know. But uh, maybe that maybe that's what will take off with it. Yeah, it could be. And also, uh, I think they throw the dot in there because this may be a good entry point for people that have never uh, yeah, that's been true. yet. Yeah, point, I think, like, you know, because Tom, you were like, what? Why would they do that? I yeah. think that's probably why. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. All right. But wait, there's more. This is the last of the Amazon announcements. They just went forever. And they were at the same time as Oculus. But we we took that hit for you. We're here to help <laughs> you understand it all. Uh, Sidewalk from Amazon is a low bandwidth, long distance wireless protocol meant to connect IoT devices. It has better range than Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at up to a mile uh, and is apparently more power efficient and simpler to implement than 5F. It uses the free 900 megahertz spectrum and Amazon will publish the protocol for other device makers to integrate. The first product will be the Ring Fetch, meant to track your dog, coming next year. Uh, Amazon also announced the Certified for Humans program to make setting up smart home devices easier. Devices in the program will have a reduced number of steps to connect to Amazon voice services, support automatic firmware updates, and a dozen other requirements. Uh, that's a thing you can put on your box to say, like, hey, if you got an Echo, this will be really easy to set up. And then something called the Day One Edition program, where you have to be invited to buy these products. But if you are, you get to try out some experimental stuff from Amazon. And the first two examples are Echo Frames. Those are frames that you can put your prescription lenses in that have an integrated mic and small speaker so that you can talk to it and get voice assistant access through your glasses. $180. And the Echo Loop, a titanium frame or a titanium ring that pairs with your phone and has a haptic engine to vibrate. So it's activated when you hit a discrete button and you can hold it up to your mouth to talk to it. 
hold it up to your ear to hear responses. And if you get like a phone call or something, it'll vibrate too. $130. Again, these are both through the day one edition program that lets you try stuff if they let you. I don't know I how want, you get invited though. I want the dog one. Right I do too, Ring Fetch. Yep. That's exactly, the whole time I was like, can't wait. Let's and try Ring it. Fetch is not day one edition. That's just coming as an example of a sidewalk protocol device next year sometime. Yeah, so you I, don't would even say, I would just say hurry up with that because I, I feel like, like last night, I couldn't find the dog. I don't know where she went. This is just <laughs> in the house. I'd go for Wi-Fi at this point, but I, I wish I had a tracker on her because it turned out she was nestled inside of a little tiny hole full of blankets. Oh, and no I, kidding. No idea. And I couldn't That's find hilarious. her. So I would love something like that. Especially yeah. for um, but also, but also something like Echo Frames. All right. So, I mean, two out of three of us are or two out of uh, three out of four of us, if we're including Roger, are wearing glasses. Right. So if you could have the glasses that you already wear, but it has um, Amazon as such an enabled uh, uh, capabilities. That's cool, right? I actually think, I, you know, maybe they're too expensive for what they do. Mm. But, you know, 180 bucks, that's a lot. But then a pair of glasses often, yeah, and this is before the lenses. Also. Okay, this is just the frames, but uh, sometimes frames can be that much. So I like the idea that I could have these paired with my phone and be able to get some notifications and stuff. I probably wouldn't use them as much as I think I do, but this seems like a very elegant and very focused use I, of glasses. I will yeah. say that for 180 bucks, it's pretty cheap because I spend I spend anywhere up to three to 400 bucks on my frames. You with, the, go. with the lenses, though, right? No, yeah, no, 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 no. With Just lenses, you spent three hundred eighty dollars for your frames without the lenses. Yeah. Dang! Wow, you are fancy boy. I roll. Yeah. Sorry, one hundred eighty bucks. Wow. Pretty cheap. No wonder you don't run your air conditioner. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. All kidding aside, Roger, you're right. If you're, if you're spending a lot for all of bad. this yeah. uh, right. already, wouldn't it be cool to be able to, you know, have some smart capabilities um, that are uh, bundled in? Well, what yeah. Roger needs, Roger needs a little, I don't know, like a tracking device that can latch <laughs> on to his existing pair of very expensive glasses so that he doesn't lose it in the same way that we don't want to lose our dogs. See, that's what I want. I want more tracking stuff. And I know some of the stuff exists. I know you can go buy little Wi-Fi trackers and things like this, but I really like this protocol for just what's the stuff I lose all the time? My glasses, where's my wallet, where's my whatever? And I want to stick one of these on everything. That's yeah. how I want my life to be. That'll be interesting. I, I like that they're making the they're publishing the protocol. I'd prefer it be an open standard. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You might have some ideas about how we can all go forth in the uh, the smart uh, uh, glasses world that we're about to live in. Submit stories and vote on others at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. We are also on Facebook. Join our group if you haven't already. Facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. And thanks to Scott Johnson for being with us today. It was a packed day. Scott, what has been going on with you since yeah. we last spoke? It's been pretty nutty. Um, I am happy to show this off, though. I know I've been teasing you guys about it for a while now, but I finally got a full test deck in uh, with my new card game in it. It's nice. Fantastic. Yeah. So nice. I'll, Looking good. Great. I got to finish up the, uh, the instructions and a few other little tweaks, but... The card game is done. It's here. I play tested it. We're getting ready to get it up on a Kickstarter. Here's what you want to do if you're interested. You can go follow its progress, which is going to be real soon, by the way, this whole Kickstarter thing. If you head on over to frogpants.com slash rockrunners, there's an entire page dedicated to it. There's a link at the top of the frog pants as well once you're on the site. Uh, and you can learn more about it, how it plays, where the idea came from, how soon you'll be able to see some video and some other stuff. So go check that out. That's at frogpants.com slash rockrunners. And for everything else, follow me on Twitter at Scott Johnson. Hey, we're getting towards the end of the month, uh, which means this is the the last month of the old reward system. Current rewards will be delivered at the end of this month, and then new rewards go up on the Patreon. If you know, want to know what's changing, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash Patreon. And if you have feedback for us, our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We are live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. And find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club.
Hope you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>